Mr. Speaker, I thank the gentleman for yielding. I rise uh, very uh, forcefully in favor of this bill. I think that it, it is a good rule and a good underlying bill, and I'm proud to support it. Uh, I, I agree with my colleague, my former colleague on the Rules Committee, the gentleman from Texas, when he says that uh, uh, this is a, a, an internal struggle uh, within the Democratic majority, within the Democratic Party over this piece of legislation, just as I think, Mr. Speaker, that they're engaged in an internal struggle uh, over the issue of whether or not to allow drilling uh, off our out, out of continental shelf for bo both oil and natural gas and to utilize our own resources to bring down the price of energy and the price of the pump for the American people who are suffering so badly. And that particular legislation, of course, uh, the, the leadership is in favor, uh, Mr. Speaker, of saving the planet. Uh, the leadership of the Senate is in, in favor of getting rid of, rid of all fossil fuel, which he characterized as poison. Uh, the leader of the Sierra Club says it would be a good thing if we had to pay 10 and $12 uh, a gallon for, for gasoline at the pump. Uh, that's the leadership. Uh, but there are many, uh, Mr. Speaker, in, in the Democratic majority, rank and file, if you will, the Blue Dog Coalition, uh, they're struggling. They're struggling very badly with that type policy, and I think they would feel just as we do on this side of the aisle that these di dire economic times, it's time to save not the planet, but to save the United States of America. So, Mr. Speaker, of course, I, I rise... Uh, as I say, in strong support of the amendment and the nature of the substitute that the Rules Committee has made in order for this legislation, the right of an individual to keep and bear arms is one of the most basic rights provided to all Americans by our Bill of Rights. On June 26, 2008, the Supreme Court reaffirmed that, that, that very right for the residents of the nation's capital in its ruling on the case of the District of Columbia versus Heller. The court's five to four decision rightfully deemed the long-standing ban on handguns in the homes of law-abiding citizens of Columbia to be unconstitutional. Mr. Speaker, in theory, the result of this ruling should have simply allowed Washington, D.C. residents to have the same Second Amendment rights as the rest of this country. Unfortunately, though, the D.C. City Council chose to ignore the will of the Supreme Court by passing an ordinance that continues to infringe upon the rights of individuals constitutionally protected. The strongly bipartisan amendment in the nature of a substitute for H.R. 6842 properly addresses the underlying issue to enforce the will of the Supreme Court. It does so by repealing the District of Columbia's current ban on semi-automatic pistols, which are the most commonly owned handgun in this country. It also repeals the needless requirement that a lawful firearm in the home must be either disassembled or bound by a trigger lock. These provisions undermining an individual's ability to provide for their own self-defense and the self-defense of their family and their children. Currently, there are no registered firearm dealers within the District of Columbia, so the amendment made in order will waive federal law for D.C. residents and simply allow them to lawfully purchase a handgun either in Virginia or in the state of Maryland. Mr. Speaker, it's imperative that we fully enforce the Supreme Court's will and restore Second Amendment rights to the residents of our nation's capital. I strongly support the amendment in the nature of a substitute. I urge all of my colleagues to support this amendment and if it is adopted, the underlying bill. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Gingrey, yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Texas.